there was the there was a segment that um that msnbc did um when was it it was earlier this it was actually earlier this month so it was earlier this month uh, of november and it had a and i don't watch a lot of msnbc as much as i used to and this segment had a I don't know, millionaire, billionaire, I don't know, really rich guy that uh, is a that donates to the Democratic Party. So he's a de he's a donor for the Democrats and he gives them a lot of money. He bankrolls them for their different packs and their different, you know, campaigns and their different candidates and all the, you know, like basically the loyalists that are that are there for the Democrats essentially. And so he was on, on MSNBC and he was basically giving a warning to the Democrats and telling them, listen, you better follow the line or else, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be pulling my money. I'm going to be pulling my funds, but I don't want to give it all away. This is the, this is an audio clip from the segment here. Why don't you listen to this? And we'll talk about it on the other side. It's set to meet with top White House officials, including Gary Cohn and Mark Short to discuss tax reform. Joining me now, chairman and CEO of Diamond Resorts, a good friend of mine, Stephen Klubeck. Was, Mr. Klubeck was. was. The last time you and I spoke, sadly, it was right after the shooting in Las Vegas. Here we are two days after a shooting in Texas. The last thing you said to me was enough is enough. And here we are back with another shooting. So enough I want Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I hope you're watching, Mr. President. All right. You are a massively successful business guy. You're a major donor to the Democratic Party. What is your take on this bill? Well, it, it's misguided. Because to get rid of state and local tax relief is a major hit to most Americans. Major hit. Specifically in, in New York and California. And if you put New York and California together, it's like the fifth largest GDP. It's dumb. This is a big corporate tax bungle. Shouldn't you like that? You're a rich guy. Uh, no, I, I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to end up paying more taxes, but it's not, I'm arguing for this because it's not proper. They should go after net operating loss carry forwards, then give kids relief for student loans. Don't hurt the kids. How can you hurt the kids? Why do you think this is the Republicans approach? I mean, when you look at cutting corporate taxes, you're not actually getting rid of any loopholes, so they're going to continue to use all the shelters. They're going to continue to use every trick in the book. Cutting the estate tax, the argument that they're trying to make that it's going to help the middle class, do you see it helping the middle class anywhere here? I, I think it's a far reach. And, you know, if you're going to help the middle class, let the kids get relief for student loans. Give the kids help. Let them go to school. And to just give the corporations all these tax cuts and not getting rid of net operating loss carry forwards is insanity. It's crazy. Keeping carried interest for private equity firms, keeping carried interest for real estate firms, that's just President Trump hooking himself up. But are Democrats going after it in the right way? Because at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who think President Trump is morally reprehensible, but they think, I want my taxes cut, I'm gonna vote with him. And when the Republic, when Democrats continue to say, down with the billionaires, we can't stand the rich, a lot of people want to be rich. So is it the right message that the Democrats are going with? It's so effing wrong. Whoa. I've talked to Schumer, I've talked to Wyden, I've talked to Pelosi. And said what? And I said, if you use the term billionaires again, I'm done. Why? Because it's aspirational. I didn't start with anything. Just penalize everyone that's done well. We all want to do well. And we should be the party of doing well. We should be a party of business and leadership. And it is very, very disturbing when I hear the millionaire or billionaire word, and I've told them to stop it, knock it off, because everyone wants to do really well. And this is the world of uh, the aspirations. Then are you worried that the Democratic Party is going too far to the left? So much so, it drives me nuts. So much so, it would make me quit the party. And I've made it very clear I'll cut your money off, and others will do the same. We've had enough. Okay, we so need a new brand. 
And what is that brand? Because right now there is an opportunity. If Democrats lose, for example, in the state of Virginia, if that isn't a wake up call that the Democratic leadership needs to get together and say, we've got to find a middle ground. Because if the Democrats continue to go far to the left, you've got that whole group in the center that are just aren't going to go the way of Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. And they're going to fracture the party even more. It's fractured. It's broken. We need a new brand. It needs to be simple. Keep it simple. Tax reform, keep it simple. Infrastructure, no bumps in the road. What more do we have to say? They need to have a new brand created. Is the Democratic Party in worse shape than Republicans? They're both insane. But at the end of the day, like them or not, as I said earlier, there's a lot of people that don't like President Trump, but then they showed up and voted Republican. Are we going to see Democrats pull it together and vote together? A lot of Bernie supporters did not turn and vote for Hillary. They just didn't vote at all. I know, and I, I can tell you that if we go far left, I'm out. I'm out. We need middle ground. So when you tell the Democratic leadership this, when you meet with Wyden and Pelosi and Schumer, what do they say to you? Well, so far they've given me great signals that they're willing to participate and get there. We shall see. We shall see. Do you think this tax plan is going to get voted through? I mean, Republicans need a win here. Even if it doesn't work for their state, if Paul Ryan doesn't get this through, he's got no future. They will have no legislative wins for 2017. Well, they have a lot of difficulties. Uh, they are very, unfortunately, bigoted, anti-Semitic and caustic and they're creating civil war they and want to create a civil war steve bannon wants a civil war 100 percent. it's disgusting okay and you wanted to talk about gun control get rid of these assault weapons get rid of them then steve tell me this if it's bigoted if it's anti-semitic if it's caustic why is it winning good question a sad state for us then what needs to be done? You need to run for governor of the state of Nevada? <laughs> no. In short, what needs to be done? Like here we are uh, on the eve of tax reform. We, 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 need, we need people getting together in a room and be moderate with one another. We need to get along. We need to be able to speak and get things done. And we need compromise, compromise. Okay, then just answer me this before we go. I understand why the forgotten American, why Trump's base said, I want to break the system. The system isn't working for me. When Trump said, hasn't worked for you for 30 years, why not vote for me? I kind of understand that. But you're a big casino guy. You're a Vegas guy. You are surrounded by Steve Wynn, Sheldon Adelson. Why did, if the party is bigoted, anti-Semitic, caustic, why are they backing it? Ask them. I ask you, you know them. What's your opinion? Maybe they're confused. Maybe they're confused. Maybe they're confused. But look, I'm just as caustic and arrogant and aggressive on the Democratic side. So, you know, Trump-esque, trump light. But I'm willing to fight for Democratic principles. And I'm not going to give up. And hopefully we'll get our shit together. And in your mind, the Democratic Party does stand for the American dream, and it does stand for free markets, and it does stand for capitalism, good capitalism. Correct. And I hope we can get those messages out. Good luck to you. My friend Steve Klubeck, always great to have you visit. Up next. You're lovely. Much more on today's big election as you can follow the latest news. On this guy is an absolute clown, in my opinion. He keeps threatening Democrats and saying like, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to be out of here. Well, get the fuck out of here then. Nobody's asking for you to be around here. Nobody's begging for you to to be a part of the party or, you know, as far as a donor in the party and, and giving money to the Democrats. I mean, maybe the Democrats want it because they're just like the Republicans, just like most politicians, they're so hopped up on all the on all the donations, they, they're obsessed with it. But... I guarantee you, majority of the people, regular people out there, not the politicians, regular people want nothing to do with you.
want nothing to do with what you have to offer have want nothing to do with what you're what you're you're giving us which is basically just a bunch of talking points and and scare tactics and well you better do this or else i'm going to be out here or you know we got to be more moderate and what was the other thing he said he said something about how he says i, I can tell if we go if we go far left i'm out I'm out. We need middle ground. And he says, we got to be moderate. Like, does this guy even know what moderate is? To this guy, moderate is, no, we have to give, you know, huge tax breaks to people like me because I'm a rich bastard. I'm a rich motherfucker. So I need all the, I need all the tax relief in the world because I'm just being taxed too much. So like this guy, he's just constantly, he's just constantly portraying himself as, as the victim. And this is the guy that's the, that's a serious problem in, um, in this so-called demo democracy that we have going on in this country he is he's just he's making everything worse he's not helping uh this this country become a dom democracy he's not helping the democratic party the democrats may think he's helping he may think he'd be helping but he's not and he goes out there and he says oh you know i'm in favor of you know gun reform and stuff you know all this gun reform is so black so is so bad okay he may think that but that's but he's not doing doing anything to help that so what is he going to do? He's going to go compete with the NRA. The NRA is is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, donor to the Republican Party, along with the Koch brothers, Sheldon Adelson, all those people. But the NRA is up there. The NRA has the Republicans in their back pocket, and even some members of the Democratic Party. But you're never going to beat the NRA. The NRA are always going to be better than everybody else. So, you know, if you want to try and you know take down that giant, it's good luck to you. It's not going to happen. But as far as as far as what's going on regarding the donors for for democrats if he wants to get the hell out of here then get the hell out nobody wants you just move out of the way you're just you're in our way you're in our way you're you're not you're not leading it to any progressive you know progressive policies or progressive or progressive ideals being pushed you're just you, you're you're cre you're uh, creating more corporatism you're creating more problems you're uh, you know making us making the country let alone the party more beholden to to corporate cash which leads to less populism and you know just more elitism essentially we don't need all that elitism all that elitism is is what's ruining us you know and i don't know this guy either does, hasn't figured it out or he thinks that you know democrats can be democrats can be i don't know democrats i guess whatever his idea of a democrat is while still selling out to corporations and selling out to you know big donors and stuff that seems to be his mentality so he thinks like oh yeah you can still be democrats but you can also sell out and you know pull that off somehow it's complete bullshit and i don't like i, I can't even stand the guy the guy's attitude he acts like he's he's, he's acts like another version of trump he acts like he's like the democratic version of Trump, not the liberal version, the democratic version of Trump. He's acting like, oh, look at this. I'm a straight shooter and I'm shooting from the hip and I'm going to tell you how it is. And I'm going to look at him cussing and shit saying, yeah, they need to get their shit together. And, you know, they're so effing wrong. Like, just stop being so fake. It's obvious the guy is he's it's obvious he's putting on a show to, to get attention. He's trying to curse and and be all excuse me, be all, uh, you know, off the cuff and, and, you know, I don't know, caustic as he called it, just so he can get attention. That's not really who he is though. Like you can tell. And anytime you can, anytime you see people acting like that, especially, especially about like, especially these elitist types and politicians too, similar to Trump and others out there that are like that, yeah, you can tell it's fake. You can tell they they're they're putting on an act so they can either get attention or maybe, you know, or maybe that's what they have decided to all of a sudden become just so they can get the attention. But it's not real. It's not really who they are because they're always trying to be all like they're always trying to be like button up and, you know, proper and, you know, how do you do? And, you know, uh, you know, chip, 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 cheerio. And, you know, I need to be all proper like it was like it was back in the day, you know, like, no, it's it's totally fake. And I, I can't stand these people. I mean, they're they're absolute. They're absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know why anybody takes them seriously. But I mean, I, I guess that's what it's come down to as far as. Uh, you know, as far as certainly with MSNBC, MSNBC, you know, loves to take these people seriously. 
MSNBC sees them as, you know, as sees them as somebody that they can suck up to, essentially. So, yeah, that guy's name is Steve Klubeck. I'm, who knows? We'll probably be seeing him again at some point. But he's been he's been mocked all over Twitter. He's been all over Twitter, you know, yelling at everybody. People are yelling at him, and he's just making a fool out of himself, just like he did on MSNBC. So, I mean, if he wants to put him, if he wants to go out there and represent the Democrats, good luck. The Democrats are only going to be getting worse with popularity. They're only going to be getting more more uh, unpopular if he he's around as if they're not already getting unpopular as it is. 